Hello, Alexia. Good to see you. Whoa, that's not what we want. That's the ad that's going to play before the live. Sorry about that. Hello, everyone. Hello. Let's see. Okay, I think I have, yep. So I think you can see what we're gonna be working on today, but I'm gonna talk a little bit about it first. Spellbinders has some newish dies that just recently came out, and they are all art supplies dies. So you can create things like paintbrushes, palettes, they have lots of different combinations. I purchased a couple because I just really love them. So I definitely tend to love uh, dyes that create objects, things like vases, you know, that you can put flowers in, things like that. But art supply dyes, I think those are probably my favorite. So I thought it would be really fun to create some cards for crafty friends because they probably love art supplies too. Hello, hello. Hi, Cindy. Sunny Montana. Oh, nice. Yeah, it's sunny here today as well and pretty warm. We already have our AC on, unfortunately. Little Link Crafts with Rachel. Yay, I am super excited to create today. I have been thinking about, I created one card and I've been thinking about another one. So we'll see how fast we get through the first one. Scottsdale, Arizona. Yep, nice and sunny out here in Arizona, right, Nancy? I don't know if you have your AC on, but I have my AC on today. <laughs> At least it's April now, I guess. When it was March, I thought, oh gosh, <laughs> we're already putting the AC on in March. We're in trouble. Hello, everybody. All right, so let me at least show you the dyes that I'm going to use today and then um, show you the card that I already made. That's what we're going to kind of put together and then show you the other dies that I have. And if we have time, maybe we'll make a second card too. I haven't planned that one out as much, but I think it'll be pretty easy to put together. So let me just swap out. Hello, Patricia. Hello, Marilyn in Central Texas. Hi, Anne early Sunday morning in the south of New Zealand. Wow, that's far from here. Let's see. Hello, Robert. Hello from Whittier, California. Okay, we've got people all over the place today. So still chilly in New York. I'm sorry to hear that. <laughs> you can definitely have some of our heat if you'd like, because I think it's going to get very hot here very fast. All right, so I'm going to switch cameras over. Freezing temps in Winnipeg, Central Canada. Oh my gosh, yeah. That definitely sounds a lot colder than we have here. <laughs> okay, so the first die set that I wanna share with you is called Artful Brush. And this die set comes with the paintbrush handle. It comes with a die that you can cut out uh, the brush um, pieces, the hairs for the brush. It also comes with a metal piece that would hold the bristles of the brush together, comes with paint droplets, and it comes with kind of a swipe of paint dripping. So that's the first die set. That's what we're going to create right now with. Um, and then I also grabbed a stamp set so this is a clear stamp set that's called Friends Are the Best. Let's see, there we go. So it's got a bunch of really sweet messages, things that you could use for crafty friends, but also things that you could use for anyone. So there's craftiness is happiness, create happiness, but then there's also you color um, me happy, create art, thanks for coloring in my world. So really kind of, spans the gamut there. Let's see who else is checking in. Hi, Connie from Oregon. That's very exciting. I bet. I, I don't know. Are you guys still cold or is it getting warmer there? Andy from Maryland. 
Hello, Marianne's Craft Corner. So let me know who else is crafting today. Are you gonna hang out and craft with me? Are you gonna craft later? What is everybody doing this weekend as far as crafting? And what are you working on? I'd love to hear. Okay, so this is the card that I wanna make today. And I used some Distress Oxide inks. I used the Spellbinders die set that I just shared with you, the stamp set from Spellbinders that I just shared, and um, an embossing folder, which I'll show with you in a minute. The other die set that hopefully we'll have time to get to is called Painter's Palette. And you can cut out this entire palette, the paintbrush, um, the paint tube, and all these little paint swatches. So hopefully we'll get to that. If we don't, I'll probably do it in a later video or live. Okay, doke. So the first thing that I want to start with is this embossing folder from Spellbinders. It's a nice extra large embossing folder. I don't even know. Nine, let's see, five and three quarters by almost nine, I guess. So it's nice and large. So you could definitely create a slimline card with this. Create that big background. You could do a five by seven in here for sure. I did an A2 card. So I just placed it inside. Doesn't have to be straight in here because the pattern is very organic. It's not something where it's lines where you would be able to tell if you got it sort of off kilter there. So we're gonna start with the embossed background. And I'm gonna grab a little Distress Oxide in Salvaged Patina. And I have this um, blending brush from Simon Says Stamp. I think this was a freebie during Stamptember, I wanna say, maybe. So this is really nice if you're trying to do like a whole background like this. Um, I've shared the waffle flower brushes and I'm going to use them again today. Those are smaller, so you're gonna do more detailed work with them. They're called shader brushes. This is kind of, you know, if you're doing a whole background like this, you definitely wanna do that. Need to work on my card submission for craft roulette, card making game show. Oh, that sounds fun, Andy. Love this card already, cute and great sentiment. Thank you so much, Patricia. Rachel is still working on Easter cards. Yeah, I definitely, definitely should get a few more Easter cards done. Okay, so I'm just going to put a really light coverage of the salvage patina. I just want those paint bumps to kind of show a little bit more. It's nice, the white on white is really, really nice, and I always like that, but sometimes when you have an embossed background, if you just put a light coat of ink on there, just a little ink blending, those embossed bits really show up nicely. Okay, so once we get that done, this is just our background. This is just so that anything that's white in the card will show up really nicely, and also, because my new favorite color combination is saltwater taffy with salvage patina. So I'm using this combo all the time now. Okay, let's see. All right, I think that's probably good. So we'll do that out of the way. Get that out of the way. And now let's work on our brushes, our paint brushes. So this piece, the handle, I still have the dies here. Yep, so this cuts out the handle and it, I don't know, there we go. Um, it's got some embossed lines on it so that it actually looks like wood. So I did die cut it out of craft cardstock, but I thought it'd be fun to add a little bit more detail to it. So kind of just like the embossed background here where we added the salvage patina, this time I'm gonna use some vintage photo. And these brushes are the, let's see, three, two. These are the ones, the Waffle Flower Shader Brush in size one. So you can see, I'll show you the difference between the two. The slanted flat shader brushes, this is size three. And then the one and the zero are both round, but they have kind of an angle to them. So you can get some really nice detailed shading on your die cuts using them. So I'm just gonna use Vintage Photo. And another tip about these brushes, <laughs> I'm thinking about it. So I pulled out one brush without really thinking and got it into my Vintage Photo. 
And then I pulled out my cup of brushes and I saw that I had already done a brown and I was kind of bummed. I was like, I don't really need two browns. Like, I know I don't use brown that much. Um, but the great thing about these is you can totally wash them. And let's see this one. No, that's not a good idea. Let's see. I see one that I washed that you can tell that I used it on a color. Here, this one. It's not maybe perfectly white, but there's no ink in there and it's not going to transfer any ink. And it's pretty much white. Like you got pretty close to being white. So there. So I'll just wash these. That's fine. Okay. So for this, I don't really want to cover up the whole handle. I just want those lines that were embossed to show up. So I am like, I have the heaviest hand of anybody known to mankind when it comes to ink blending, but I am trying to be really light. Do all those dyes have a California cancer warning on them? That is a good question. Let's see. Nope, they do not. Additional products. Let's see. Visit Spellbinders, Spellbinders Company, All Rights Reserved. Nope. No, no warning on these guys, Lori, Laura Ann, no warning on the dyes. Um, let me see the other one. Do I have the other one? Here we go. Yep, this guy too. So it's got the name, how many dyes, all that good stuff. Additional products. No warning on this one either. So yeah, I guess none of their dyes do. Okay, so back to this. Hi, Terry. Good to see you on your break. Are you working right now? Okay. And just a little bit. And then I'll just show you the difference between this and the one that I haven't done. So it's not a lot. It's really a light touch if you can handle it, if you can manage it. Let's see. See, just a little bit. And it just in person, it's hard to see those, those wood grain lines in the camera, but in person, that ink just helps them stand out just a little bit more. Okay, so let's do the rest of the handles here and let me just make sure I didn't miss anybody here. It's on the website. Oh, that's interesting. And then, you know, I'm not sure. I don't know if maybe it's a different product or is it on the dyes on the website? I'm not sure about the California warning. Still working on Easter cards. See, okay, we already got that. Let's see. I feel like I missed somebody saying, "Oh yeah, Andy, I need to work on my cards." I think it's gonna be a Christmas card. Okay, I was like, I thought I saw something about Christmas cards, and I was like, "Wow, you are on top of it!" Because <laughs> I am nowhere near. All right, there we go. So now I'll just finish up these. I'm gonna do just like that uh, sample card. I'm gonna do three. I keep picking up the die instead of the die cut because it's, you know, their dies are kind of that golden color. <laughs> there we go. All right. Make sure you're doing the right side, obviously. Let's cut the embossed lines. There we go. I think it's so cute. They even have the little hole cut out of the handle. They just look so realistic. They're super, super cute. Okay, that's vintage photo and the brush handles. Now for you would love a new tour of your craft room. Okay, I will try and do, so my craft room, I'll talk a little bit about it while we're working on the next part. On the dies on the website, oh, these brushes that I used. Oh yeah, yeah, the brushes are great. They're my favorite right now. I'm totally using them all the time. Okay, so now let's work on the bristles of the brush. I think I'm gonna need to clean this just a tad. Okay. I don't want to get brown on the bristles because my bristles are going to be white. Okay, okay. okay, so these are the bristles. You get a bristle die. I cut out four per brush just so that they were kind of nice and thick like that. Um, you could totally just get away with two probably, but I really like the look of the four. So... I want the bottom of the bristles to look like they were dipped in paint and they're going to be painting that driplet. So this time I'm going to use 
the shader um, angled larger brushes that I showed you before. So let's do some Kitsch Flamingo. And I'm just gonna take them individually one at a time. And I'm just gonna brush downward until I don't see white, at least on the very bottom of the bristles. I wanna leave some of it white so it looks like it was, you know, kind of dipped. Okay, so we're gonna do all four for Kitsch Flamingo. So about my craft room. Since um, all the craziness of the world, <laughs> my husband has been working from home. So we share an office. So it's kind of hard to do a, a real craft room tour because this is kind of an in-between-ish space. Now, I have shared sort of my desk, which is that way, um, and I've shared some organization information about what's in my cubes behind me. And I've also shared some organization info on my drawers. Um, so definitely look at a couple of my organization videos. They're all put into a playlist so that you can find them easily. But it would be great to do a real actual tour sometime. All right, so that's Kitsch Flamingo. Now, of course, we're gonna go to Saltwater Taffy. And there's just this little spot that needs to be popped out there. Okay. Okie doke. So, I'm gonna do the same exact thing with Saltwater Taffy, my new favorite color. I don't know if you all have the new Saltwater Taffy yet, but if you don't, I highly recommend. <laughs> it is just beautiful. It goes really well, like I said, with salvage patina, but it also blends really nicely with um, sponge sugar, kitsch flamingo. Like it just really fits into that family of pinks and peaches of distress oxides really nicely. Okay. Oh, this one little piece just kept not getting fully popped out. So I have to just pop those out real fast. Okay. And let's see, that's three and four. Okay. And then I decided for the last color, I was gonna do blueprint sketch. This is kind of a different combination that I haven't really done much of, but I really like the pop of bright blue and this gives you kind of a contrast. Like I said, all those other colors that I was mentioning that it that the saltwater taffy blends with are also light and airy. This gives you a little bit of a punch of color. So that's kind of fun. I knew this was gonna happen. So I think I lost one bristle, but that's okay. We'll make it work. Nope, 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 nope. I got it, I got it. <laughs> I was like, all oh, these little bits and pieces. <laughs> I'm gonna lose one. Let's see here. Okay. I'm smooshing my brushes, but I think if we put this one underneath, it'll be fine. And again, you just really want to make sure that at least the tips of the bristles are nice and covered with color because that would obviously be the place where there'd be the most paint at the end there. Okay. One more, and then we're good with bristles. Thank goodness, right? <laughs> Okay. All right. So those are my three colors of bristles. And once again, I think I just need a little bit of cleaning here. Okay. So now we have handles, we have bristles, and I did cut out, let me show you the die. That's the kind of, um, band that goes around here that traps the bristles into the brush. So I cut those out of, see I only need three, um, the Spellbinders Mirror Silver cardstock. If you have not used the Mirror cardstock before, I also highly recommend this. 
it is double sided. So for those of you who do 3D pieces, this is a great foil cardstock to have because obviously you're not gonna have that white background and you're not gonna have to worry about cutting two to put one on each side to make sure that there's no white background. So it comes in silver and gold as well, the double sided. Okay, so now let's color our paint splotches. So for these guys, I want them to be not really ink blended as much as just completely opaque. Now you could definitely, you know, use a larger brush like this. This is how I started it. I just took, say, saltwater taffy and took the die cut and just rubbed it into the ink pad. There we go. Now it's not gonna fully get all the pieces without getting it all over your hands. So that's the one downside. But once I have it pretty much covered, then I can just go in with the brush and move that ink around so that it completely covers up anything that's left open there. And like I said, the great thing about this is it is, well, okay, wait, there's a little bit of white left. So let's just get rid of that white. completely opaque so that it looks more like paint. You could definitely use paint if you would prefer on here, but um, I wanted all the things to completely look like they were the same, so to matchy match. So, okay, let's do the Kitsch Flamingo then. The only real bummer is the uh, blueprint sketch because it gets like all over your hands, but that's, that's okay. <laughs> it's okay to get inky when you're having fun, right? Hey Bev, how are you? Is that an Ikea Calyxina behind you? Yes, Laura Ann, it's, it's an Ikea Calyxina. It's a one, two, three, four, four by four, I guess. Uh, hi, Pretty. Just got it, but have to use it. Oh, you got the saltwater taffy, Pretty? Yeah, it is. Oh, it's gorgeous. I just love that color so much. It's funny because every pretty much every new color that has come out. Like when the Salvage Patina came out, I was like, oh, there's never gonna be a color that I love more than this color. <laughs> and then like Kish Flamingo came out and I was like, oh, there's never gonna be a color that I love more than this color. <laughs> it just keeps happening. I don't know how they do it. They really, that Tim Holtz, he really <laughs> comes out with some great colors. And just at the right time when you're, I don't know, just kind of, looking for a new color. I know a lot of people hope for a certain color at the release. I just, I don't even do that. I just kind of get super excited about it. Okay, there we go. So now we have the Kitsch Flamingo ink splat and now we have to do the messy one. Saved it for last. Okie doke. Blueprint sketch. See if I can avoid getting my fingers completely covered in ink. All right. Ooh, that one came out pretty good. I got really close there, but of course, to hold it down, I'm going to end up getting ink on my fingers, but that's okay. It wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. Ugh, oh, such a great color, too. Okay, so now we have our bristles, our handles, our ink splotches, our bands. I think we are ready to assemble some brushes. So let's do that. Okay, we're gonna have to do a little bit of cleanup. Okay. I don't know why my sprayer is not really spraying. I think I have it at a weird angle or something. Okay. Really want those brushes now. Yes, Bev, they are waffle flower brushes. They are my favorite new brushes. I use them all the time, all the time. Um, I'm gonna use these later if we have time in the second card with ink cubes. But yeah, so these are great, but I really, these are my favorite, the shader threes. I just love the flat um, edge and the angle as well. It just, it's, I don't know, it's really handy. It's worked out really well for me. Okay, to assemble, I think we're gonna use a little liquid glue, which I'm always like hesitant to in lives because it's like, is it gonna really dry? Is it gonna stay? Is it gonna, but yeah. Um, the other thing I do wanna mention is, so these paint swipes, 
in the example on the the dye, they put the paint swipes on top of the bristles. I don't know if you can see that. And I thought that was cute, but since I colored the end of my bristles, I wanted mine underneath. So I did put mine underneath and then I don't know if you can see, but like this one in particular is like a little wider than the bristles. So I'm going to try and spread the bristles out just a little bit more so that it kind of looks like they're wider here and then place them on top of the drip. Just a little note. I don't know. <laughs> okay. So I think the easiest thing is to put the cap on first because then you know how much real estate you have to work with here. So we'll put the cap on. See, this is the thing with liquid glue. Okay, there we go. Just a little bit. So this liquid glue that I'm using is from Thermoweb. It's called Ultra Bond. It has a slightly longer drying time on purpose so that you can straighten things out. The only thing is if you're impatient like me <laughs> and you don't hold it in place, it will just slide right off, right? So I do have to have a little bit of patience, press it down. It will dry not very long. It's literally like one of those things like after we all got microwaves, then it was like 30 seconds. What? You know, it's kind of like that. So just give it a second or two and it will dry. Okay. Last little cap here. And the brush has little edges that line up with um, the parts of the cap. I, right? Right, Pri? I love that. The It's such a strange color combination. It's not something I would normally think of, but the blueprint sketch really just kind of like goes like, whoa. Um, and I'm going to have it in the middle. So it'll kind of be like the, it'll draw your eye to the center of the card, I guess. Okay, so now we have our handles and our caps. Now we need to put our bristles on. So what's great about these, let me just pop out that little piece again, I keep forgetting. What's great about these is that they do have kind of this tab on the end that's relatively thick. So it's pretty easy to glue this right behind. What I'm gonna do this time, instead of having it straight up and down, I'm going to have it slightly angled just a little bit so that it looks like it's covering up that whole paint drip here, right? But I guess it would be this one. <laughs> that would be cool too. Like <laughs> the brush has one color and then the paint droplet is another color. Okay. So it's pretty easy to just put a tiny bit of liquid glue on top of your bristle and then just lay it behind the brush. And again, I'm just going to slightly angle it, like not very much at all, just slightly. And then hold that in place. And I'm going to be impatient. So hopefully this will work out. But while I'm holding that in place, I'm going to go for the next one and do the same thing. Oh, look, I didn't pop out that thing again. <laughs> that thing is like my nemesis, apparently. <laughs> one little piece. Okay. So there we go. It looks like a wider brush that way, I think. What glue is that? Okay, so we did that. Just wanna make sure I'm getting all the questions because it's hard for me to remember to go back. <laughs> now I'm just going to put a little bit on the back and just lay this down because now that I've covered the front, I'm just adding that extra layer of the bristles just to give it thickness. Right, so it actually looks kind of more like a brush. All right, so I'm gonna flip this over like this so that it dries for a minute while we go work on the next one. Same kind of thing, just put a tiny bit. So that's the other thing with this liquid glue especially, you do not need a lot. Teeny tiny, like that's probably even too much, honestly. Um, you just need tiny little dots and it's very strong. Once it dries, once you give it time to dry and you're not, crazy impatient like me. Okay, so while that one's drying, I'm going to go in with that next one. I am super surprised I haven't gotten this blue ink anywhere yet. <laughs> really should clean that off. Okay, and we're going to make that angled as well. So we get that wider look. And then 
you can just come in here with a couple of like really it's more like dots that you need than super thick lines okay but do we have see i'm impatient <laughs> okay let's make sure that the top of that is not hanging down too low okay and then the last one is there okay again i'm going to flip that over let that dry and we'll just quickly do this last guy here okay so a little bit here an angle here you can see what i'm doing there yeah not too much like i feel like that's almost a little too exaggerated there we go okay well that's drying oh i remember i'm supposed to put this one on the bottom because i kind of curled up the brush bristles there so we'll put that one oh it's just going on the bottom Never mind, never mind, never mind. <laughs> Strike that. Let's do this. So we're actually working on the top layer of bristles, even though it feels like it's the bottom. Okay, there we go. There's that. And now this has still got some adhesive on it. So we'll just add that in there. And then last but not least, this guy we will add in here. Okay, there we go. Once again, we will let that dry over there. Okay, so back to the base of the card there. Angling it works brilliant. I love, well, let's, let's hope, pretty. <laughs> let's hope, I haven't tried this yet, so hopefully that will help with my kind of odd situation there. Okay, so I'm gonna have my paint splatters at the bottom of the card. I'm just gonna try and like, Give them a little bit of room in between each other. Okay, it's time to clean the hands because I don't want to get any on the saltwater taffy. It's so pretty. Okay, so we just want them like lined up at the bottom of the card and just a little border in between each and on each side. Okay, and you know, I was like, oh, maybe I'll switch to tape runner for this, but honestly, when you're gluing on a distress oxide background like this, I really feel like liquid glue works the best. I just feel like the tape runner sometimes has a little trouble sticking to ink, especially ink that sits kind of on the paper the way that um, distress oxide does. And it's kind of creamy, that ink. So it's just tough for a tape runner to adhere. Okay, so let's do, this is, if you do both sides, then you can just kind of center out that middle piece, right? Okay. And I have the largest strip down at the bottom there. I'm gonna try and have the same margin on both sides. Place that down. And again, be a little patient. You can do the trick of putting like an acrylic block on it and just walking away for a little bit, but I don't have that luxury right now, right? So <laughs> we're just gonna have to hope for the best here. See, that is way too much, it's way too much. It'll just take forever to dry. Okay, so that's our center here, whoa, okay. And then we are almost good to go here. All right, so then we just wanna put our brushes down on top. Oh, see, that did work out a lot better. I think I got them all. Ah, oh, yay. Yep, 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 yep. Okay, so I'll show you the difference here. Oops, this one's not straight, that's why. Okay, so this one, the little paint splotch is hanging out on the side there. It's not a big deal, obviously. It's not the end of the world, I know, but it's like things like that that just make me a little nutty. So I like this a lot better. Okay. If you are watching, don't forget to give it up. Thank you so much. You guys are awesome. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, so now, do we want to 
do we want to pop up the brushes a little bit? I don't know. What do you think? Pop up the brushes or flat to the card? I kind of want to try pop up. So let's see if that would work. I don't know. <laughs> okay. So I have a piece here. I am going to just, I think, cut this in half. I think it'll be fine. Gosh, for nonstick scissors, that was that was a little sticky, honestly. <laughs> okay. Let's see. So I am going to start. Let's see. You know what? This is really thin in the center, though. That's the only thing, but it's okay. I will just take a break in the center from <laughs> the foam, and I think that will be fine. Because another issue that I had was kind of like this area here is so thick because I have the four pieces of white cardstock, I have the brush handle, and then I have this. So it was kind of difficult to get it flat to the card. So especially this one, I don't think I put glue behind this one. So I think the foam tape will help that and it will, this is great. I'm like working things out with you all. Thank you so much for helping me get through my issues with the card. Okay, so I want them all, I've got another issue was I did not get that one straight. So, but that's, you know, neither here nor there. Okay, so what I want is, I want the bristles straight on the droplets and then I want not very much space at the top and I think that, that is great I think that will work really well all right so let's do the sides again and then we'll go for the middle and so you can put the foam tape I think I'm just going to put it here because again I think if you put it whoa I think if you put it there, it's going to be too high. Okay, there we go. <laughs> it's sticking to my arm. Okay, so I just peel those guys off. And put the other side on. I don't know if you all do this, but for me, sometimes it's just easier to rotate it like upside down to see what you're really doing here. Okay. So I think that's straight on the paint swipe and it's about the same height. So I think so far I really like this method better. Okay. Asking about the glue. Okay, so I don't know if you heard that this is um, Thermoweb's Ultra Bond liquid adhesive. It comes now in a pen kind of format, um, which is, I just think it's easier to hold and handle than the larger bottle. But there's a whole fluid ounce in here so this lasts me a good long time it dries clear it's permanent it's acid free if you're doing scrapbooking with it or anything like that um yeah so i, I love it i love it like i said i just have to be a little bit more patient <laughs> okay so last one let's use this let's start here and go there and then you know what i can even do is kind of like this all right let's use these and just cut off that excess one more little piece maybe okay there we go so last but not least we'll have to do a sentiment and then i think this one is in the books okay so again see it's just easier for me sometimes to just flip it all the way around to really see what I'm doing here. I want it to be straight. I want it to be in between the other two. And I don't want it to be much lower. So I gotta redo that. There we go. Yay. <laughs> okay, so there we go. We have our three brushes. I definitely like these better. I like the brushes popped up. The handles would be kind of like heavy and dimensional so I think that makes more sense and now we just need our sentiment so let's get the stamp set out okay I did paint your dreams before but let's do something new um maybe create something every day should we try that one okay so I need some black ink 
I need some white cardstock. Oh my goodness, I put everything within reach. In the last live, I was cutting dies with scissors because <laughs> I left my snips over there in the desk and um, there's like wires everywhere. <laughs> I mean, it's shocking that I can keep them out of view pretty much because uh, they're everywhere. And I was like, if I go over there and try and get the snips, I'm gonna unplug something. It's like, there's no doubt in my mind. Okay, create something every day sounds like a plan, I think. All right. Oh, and there's one more die that I gotta show you that we'll do that at the very end. That's the little droplets die. Okay. So, I'm gonna use just some um, Stamp Market black ink. You know what, I am gonna just wipe that really fast. I just realized that I haven't used these stamps yet and if you don't, whoa, look at that, that's crazy. I like way over that. So, you know, when I'm used to using the Distress Oxides, they have that really thick felt pad. This is that foam pad. So you really just have to like gently tap. Like if you press down, it's gonna ooze like it did in the last one. Oh, you can't even really see that, can you? Well, it oozed, trust me. <laughs> you trust me, right? <laughs> okay, so create something every day. One impression because I inked it up first and because this ink it's phenomenal. I really love it for all my sentiments um, and any black stamping like that. The only thing you can't use this one for is for Copic coloring, but you can use it for watercolor. Okay, so let's take out the sentiment and the trimmer again. Okay, so if you have the top of the letters right to the plastic guide here, you're gonna have a pretty decent margin. That's almost a little bit too much for me, so I'm just gonna put the letters just outside that plastic guide, and it'll be a little closer cut, which I think is just right, I think. So, I'm gonna do the same thing down here. You can see that, can you? Okie dokie. Now we have our sentiment, we have a card, and how do I want to do this? Okay, so what I think I'm going to do here is just put foam tape here and here, and then lay it on the brush in the middle so that um, it will just be right on top there. Okay, which means I need like a small square here and a small square here. I think that should do it. Yep. And then I just want to center it in between the other two brushes. And there we go. I like this one a lot better than the first one. Oh, the last little die. Totally forgot. Oh, I almost forgot. Let's see. Of course, I can't find the die. No, here it is. Okay, so there's this little die that cuts out two little droplets. So what I did was I used the brushes and I ink blended just like a circle or a smudge of ink on some white cardstock. And then I placed the die on top of that, put some pixie tape on it to hold it in place and ran it through my die cut machine. So I have perfectly covered ink droplets. I should have brought a little uh, embellishment tool or something, but this works as well. <laughs> see so we have a couple of droplets here These ones are coming out. there we go all right so what I kind of did I did let's see so for this one I had space kind of over here I thought that was cute and then I just had two coming out here so I think we'll do the same thing two here we'll do one this is where you really want to be um, kind of oh see not that much a little cheap with the glue there we go. So I'm gonna have the Kitsch Flamingo coming down from there. 
And then maybe right in this little open spot here, we can do the blueprint sketch. Okay, whoops. Okay. Yeah, like that. And then this time, I think we have the open space here. So we meant to lose that. So I kind of did it wrong here. This one should be on that side, huh? So that's what we'll do this time. Fixing all my mistakes. Okie dokie. I just put a little bit on the back of this droplet. There we go. And then, yeah, sure, why not? I like the blueprint sketch droplets. So we'll definitely use that as well. I have that hanging off the bottom there. All right, I'm just not gonna touch that. I'm gonna leave it alone until it dries. To me, are you more relaxed or the slide? You've been creating me out loud to bring us into your Yay, thank you so much, Andy. Um, definitely a little more relaxed this time. I was a little nervous last, I was very nervous last time, honestly. <laughs> I'm still a little nervous, but I've kind of just, let's go with the flow. And when I plan something, I feel better. So the last time I shared the kit from Simon Says Stamp, and I said, let's just create a couple of cards with it. I thought that would be kind of fun, the idea that I hadn't pre-thought of the card, but man, it made me a little nervous, honestly. <laughs> Thank you so much, Preeti. Hi, hello from Belgium, wow. Are you crafting today as well? We have some people crafting, some people just hanging out for today. Um, so I'd love to hear what you guys are up to today. Okay, so that's that's this card, that's that die set. I love this die set. I think I'll be using it over and over again. I've seen a couple of the Spellbinders team uh, creating like a rainbow with it. I, it. Just so much fun. Then they also have these larger paintbrush dies. I don't know if you've seen them that have butterfly dies as well. So it looks like instead of paint driplets, there's butterflies coming from and flowers coming from the brush. So it's just a really beautiful set. Okay, let's see where we are as far as time. I don't know, we're kind of getting a little late here, but let me share what my thoughts were and we can see how far we get. Okay, this looks like a hot mess. <laughs> Easter cards, yep. Love your patient. Thank you so much. It's almost midnight over here tomorrow crafting. Good, yay, I'm so glad. Let's see, that's not the glue. <laughs> Princess Michaela. Yay, mom. <laughs> She's the best. Best daughter ever. Okay, so let's look at, whoa, it's craziness. Okay, so what I thought was for the palette, this was my idea anyway. Let's see if it works out. Um, for the other die set, which is called Painter's Palette, I thought, wouldn't it be cool to have a shaped card? So, Annie, you're cleaning. And then the reward is clapping. Okay, that's that's fair then. You have this die set. Yay! Awesome. Um, okay, for that painter's palette, I thought it'd be really cool to have a shaped palette card. So what I did was I took an eight and a half by eleven piece of cardstock and folded it in half uh this way. <laughs> Not the long way, kind of the short way. Um so then I took the large die that comes in this set. So you can see all the different dies that you get there. And what I did was I hung it off just a little bit on that left-hand side there, right? So this piece here that is a part of the cutting die, right? That little line is supposed to cut. If you hang it off the fold of the cardstock and then run it through the die cut machine, it will not cut on the fold there. So let's see if it worked. Goodness. Okay. So oh, that's cute. Okay. Um, fingers crossed, right? Okay. So with the pixie tape, it applies with pressure. So when you're holding your dies in place to cut them, you have to kind of rub 
to make sure that it stays in place. Once it goes through the die cut machine, the die cut machine is putting tons of pressure on it. So don't go to just like rip it off. It will tear the paper at that point. But it's such low tack that it will hold it in place when you put the pressure on, but then when you gently remove it, it will um, not tear your, your paper as much. Okay, so let's see, let's pop that out. Yippee. Okay, and yay, it worked. I'm so excited. <laughs> Super cute. Oh my goodness. Okay, so let's see if we can like quickly just put this guy together. All right, so I'm going to do kind of the same thing here. We're going to have the paint splotches around here and the brush like right in here. And I'm just going to work right on the base. Now, what I usually do when I make shaped cards is I cut another piece fully, just fully cut this out of white cardstock and work on that and then glue it on top. Because when I cut my base like this with a folded piece of cardstock, I don't use the Nina um, 110 pound because it's easier for the dies to go through all this extra piece of paper if you're not using something quite as heavy stock. Yay. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah. So, so that's why I usually like to cut another piece and then work on that. But I think for this purpose, what I ended up using was a hundred pound. You know that, um, the hammer mill white cardstock that you can use for foiling. That's what I used for this. So it's not like it's um, super, super lightweight. Like usually when I do this, I'll do it on like an 80 pound or like even a 60 pound just so that I can get through all the layers, but it worked fine with the, um, a hundred pound. Okay. So let's, let's put this brush kind of like ish here. Okay. And now this, the reason that I was able to just put that down without doing anything is because this piece of black cardstock has uh easy cut adhesive on the back. This is I don't know why I cut the brush handle. I think it was just sitting on my desk and I just cut it out of that. But usually for things like this sentiments, um, if you saw my last video with the Spellbinders um, kit of the month for April, it was the small die and the glimmer kit. And the small die came with these words that are very, very fine and detailed. And trying to put liquid adhesive behind that is just it's not my cup of tea, honestly. So I like to use a thin adhesive sheet. I use Thermoweb's Easy Cut. I've also used Pink and Main's uh, double-sided adhesive sheet. They both work perfectly. Um, and I just put it on the back of my cardstock and then I cut on the cardstock itself. And then you just turn that cardstock into stickers. So definitely my favorite thing. Okay, so let's see what else we have here. <laughs> okay, so this is... I use these as guides too. So like, you know, if you're like, sometimes I look at dyes and I'm like, well, what is that? <laughs> you know, like, I have no idea what that is. So uh, use companies, websites, use their marketing materials, use their packaging, like use whatever you need. That's why they provide those samples is so that you can uh, figure out ways to use their products that are perfect for you. Okay, so a little bit of liquid adhesive on this. Now, this is not bad, right? I don't mind using liquid adhesive on this. So, oh, okay. So I'll show you those if I can. See that little bump here? This goes right on top of that. So it's just showing you exactly where it lays on top of that brush, which is cool because, again, it'll give it just like a little touch of dimension. Okay, now... Um, Let's see, where's the, where's, where's, where's? I have all these little pieces. Oh, here we go, okay. Here's a paint tube and a label for the paint tube. We can do that. Um, this is kind of that rolled bottom edge so that you can roll it up and then get all the paint out from the bottom. And this is the cap for that paint. So that is super cute. Okay, and let's see, you can do a label if you want for inside that label. And let's see, these are all the paint swatches. This is what came out of the palette. We don't need that. Just 
wondering where the brush is, honestly, because <laughs> I can't find that. But maybe we'll just have to not do that right now. It's fine. Okay, but honestly, we should probably figure out the sentiment first anyway. So let's use this one. This is really cute. You color my happy. And then we'll do just a little bit of ink blending on those paints. And then I'm going to just use a little bit of crystal glaze on it. And then we'll call it a day. How's that? Fair. Okay. So what am I going to do? That's it. Okay. Mini Misty. Hopefully this will, yeah, it will. Okay, perfect. So let's see how big this palette is when it's completely cut out. So five and a half. Oh, this would fit. Let's see. Yeah, I guess it would fit right on an A2 card. Why is it doing that? There we go. Oh, it's because everything's white. There we go. So it would fit on an A2 card if you want. Obviously, on a 5 by 7 you'd have more room, like, around the outside. Okay, camera, calm down. All right. So let's, let's kind of stamp the sentiment right there. And... And then we'll just work on those little palettes and then see if I can find the brush and then otherwise we're good. Okay. Now, it can be any really orientation that you want because this is the card itself. So maybe right here by the brush. Will I still be able to fit paints in there? Yeah, I will. Okie doke. Okay, same kind of thing though. This stamp hasn't been used yet, so I'm just going to ink it up and wipe it off real fast. Ooh. There we go. Okay, tap, tap, not smush. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. All right, so this time, instead of using those larger brushes, because um, these spots are so tiny, like I could have done the same thing that I did with those droplets where I inked the cardstock first and then die cut out the little spot. Let's see, do I wanna start pink up here? Yeah, let's do that. So in the example, they put the shine mark another color, like a darker color. I'm going to leave the shine mark white. So um, just cause it's easier, honestly. <laughs> Let's do raspberry. So actually, you know what I'm going to do? Because I don't want, I don't want to use more than one brush for the same kind of family here. So I'm going to start with the light one first so that I don't have to worry about cleaning it off first. Okay, so you can see, like, you don't have to put that much ink on these brushes because they're small. They're perfect for getting into tiny places like this. Okay, so quick, easy, like you can use your cubes if you sometimes, I have my cubes, speaking of drawers and organization, I have my cubes in a drawer in my um, Alex drawer unit. And so, why did I put that back? So sometimes I forget about them. <laughs> don't want to do that right so okay now I will say there are four shapes of these paint droplets or paint swatches or paints <laughs> and um, so if you want to go all the way around you do have to cut them out twice just so you know um, oh goodness they're so cute though like like really so so cute Okay, so that's kind of our pinks. I'm gonna do like a yellow. Let's do the big one here. And uh, these cups from Waffle Flower, they are a white silicone, super, super sturdy. Um, they're easily cleaned if you get ink all over them like I just did. So, and they fit the entire 10 pack of brushes. So these brushes, you can get them as a sampler pack where it's one of each size there's four different sizes or you can get 10 of each if you prefer like if you have a size that you know you love i definitely recommend like if you haven't tried them yet just try out like a sampler pack and see how you use them and how much you use them and which ones you use the most i have found for me that i use these a lot a lot a lot a lot but right now 
this is actually perfect for these. So, you know, it just kind of depends on the type of ink blending that you like to do. Okay, so which one haven't we done yet? It looks like this one. Yeah. Okay, so, oh, we need our oranges. Where's our oranges? I have two different oranges that I was going to use. is the salmon color. I don't know if you've seen, you guys are on Instagram, uh, the stamp market has been sharing their new colors and they are gorgeous. <laughs> they have kind of um, groupings. So they have these two yellows that work, it seems to me, beautifully together. Then they have, I think it's like three greens, three blues, and they all kind of just it's like a mint and then a you know slightly darker color and a darker color than that. So if you like to coordinate things like that, like if you're used to working with um, say like Copics where you do like a light color, a medium color, and a dark color, these are perfectly geared towards that. So, okay. So I'm gonna have to do another one like this for the other orange. Okay. Oh, my square is in the way. Sorry about that. I can move that. There we go. <laughs> that should be better. Okay, so this is the darker one. Okay, so now we have Okay. Let's do the G. This one. This is one of my favorite colors. Apple, such a pretty green. I like how bright it is. Okay. Um, and then I have two blues. Oh, but I only have two more spots left. Unless I lost one here. Let's see. Yep, we're just going to do one blue and one purple. How's that? <laughs> we're going with it. We're just going with it. This is my favorite blue. It's called Breeze. Do this guy. Okay. And then for purple, let's do, since we're only doing one, let's do Wisteria. Okay. Do I even have the brush? Oh, there it is. There's the brush die. Maybe I can quick cut one. Okay. All right. So now we have our palette and our paints. So let's just, now I need to clean my hands because I'm definitely going to get ink smudge all over the white palette. I know it. I think for these, and just do a little drop of liquid just because we'll be able to move them around a little bit more. All right, so let's have it like go like this, sort of. So I'm just gonna do a little, whoops, little teeny tiny drop. And like I said, I am going to keep the shine marks white because then it's gonna look like a shine mark to me. Um, but I do like the way that they did in the sample, they did a darker color. So these are the little tiny pieces that come from the dye from the shine mark. See, it's like this. So if you really wanted to, you could color that a different color and pop it in. I am not that patient. Okay. Let's do orange here. Yeah. Inner orange here. Oh, we got two of the same. That's fine. It's all good. Yellow here. And then I'm going to have the brush here. So I'm going to move 
towards the other side, I think. Would have been nice to have the brush, but that's okay. <laughs> So I got a little bit of green on the bead. But again, this is like an artist palette, and I don't know. I've never seen an artist palette that is neat and tidy, so I think it's fine. All right, and then the last thing that we can add here, besides the brush, obviously, the last thing we can do is the tube of paint so that we can have that kind of right there. All right, so we can then take, oh, this is where we can bring in some of those colors that I thought I was going to get to use, but I didn't get to use. So what we'll do here, hmm, I don't want to do this. Okay. Oh, we want to do this guy first. Okay, so, yeah. See, this is what happens when I go plan. <laughs> All right, let's cover up this entire tube with a little bit of blue. This is that light blue, that breeze. This is the color that's in the palette. And then, oh goodness. See, I should have cleaned that. That's okay. Then, it's gonna look like my paints would look. <laughs> Let's just clean that really fast, just a little bit. Okay, so then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the little label and I'm gonna color that with the darker blue so that this darker blue gets a little, gets to be on the card too. And to see how easy that is to cover this guy up with that ink. So easy with these brushes. I just love them to pieces. Okay, there we go. And then we'll be able to just put a little bit of liquid glue here here, 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 and we'll put that right on top. And then I kind of like the white in the center, so I'm gonna pop in this piece that cut out. Okay, it's come together. Then this is that little metal end that's going to be used to uh, roll up the bottom. So if you can get the last bit of paint out of there. Okay. And then we got our cap. So that is going to go right on the end. I like how you could have the cap off because it's hard to see, but like the, um, the die for the tube looks like a tube at the end here. So if you wanted, you could have it open and then it kind of squirting onto your palette. But I'm just going to have it right there. And I am going to put a little bit of foam tape on the back of that. From Pittsburgh. Hi, Christine. Okay. There we go. Oh. See how cute is that? So the only thing we need is the brush. If I see if I can find it, otherwise we're just gonna have to call that a day. But see, I, I can't find it anywhere. I mean, I can find the die, but then I'd have to kind of leave you all alone. So the cool thing is about the brush, you could just cut the brush out of bristle colors, or you could do what they did and put some ink or some paint at the edge of the brush so that it looks like it's. Um, painting from that palette spot. So, but you get the picture and then of course it's a shaped card too. So that's super fun. So just another way to use these dies to create a card for crafty friends. Hi, Kathy. How are you? Hope you're doing well. So the two cards we made with the two different spell binders. Uh, paint supply dyes, which are some of my favorites. We have paint brushes and we have a brushless <laughs> brush over here, bristleless brush over here, but you get the idea. So just a really fun dyes, especially like I said, for, um, let me, let me, let me switch, 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 switcheroo. So I can talk to you, swap. 
Okay, <laughs> there we go. So just really fun dies if you're making cards for other crafters, for people who you know like to do painting or other arts and crafts, things like that. Um, but with the sentiment set as well, like I mentioned, just so many options just for people encouraging people, you color me happy, um, paint your dreams, just lots of different things. So a really fun set. I had so much fun with them. Thank you so much for hanging out with me while I made these and fixed my mistakes on the brush card and then came up with a, um, a palette without bristles on the brush as well. But you get the idea. I think you would love these dyes. I do. Um, everything will be listed in the description box below the live, but mostly thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I really appreciate the time that you spend with me. It is so nice to be able to chat with you all and to hang out and craft together. Let's see. Just make sure I see everybody. Thank you so much, Annie. I really appreciate you guys. I'm kind of just chilling watching you on YouTube. Yes, the Manny is great. Oh, gosh, your nails always look so good. So, so good. Oh, both your cards are just perfect. Yay, pull out the dice tomorrow. I know some of you are far, far away, and it's midnight or late at night, and so you're going to be crafting tomorrow. Some of you are here crafting today, but thank you so much, everybody. I really, really, really appreciate all the kind comments again. Oh, I wanted to tell you on Monday, I can't share any sneak peeks yet, but it will be the Hero Arts release is on Monday, the kit and the add-ons. So that's what I'll have. That video will be coming on Monday. And then next Monday, the Monday after that, will be the new and must-have crafty supplies for the month. And that's when I'll be doing the D-Stash giveaway. So be sure to stay tuned for that as well. And once again, thank you so, so much for all your time for your kind words. It really lifts me up and I just enjoy hanging out with you all, crafting with you and just chatting with you. So thank you so much. Have a great evening or whatever time it is where you are. And I will see you next week, same time, same place. Okay. Bye everybody.